Hello everyone, welcome to the video on Pharmacology Question Analysis and Explanation. Now the questions which I am going to explain are given in APPSC conducted 2018 Assistant Professor Examination. Now these questions when you analyze you will understand the level of competitive exam questions. So see, knowing the answer is not just enough. You need to analyze why the answer is correct and what, what about the remaining options are. So let us see the questions. The first question, look at the question. Identify the set of drugs which should not be taken at the same time. Now you need to read the question tag properly. Which should not be taken at the same time. So co-administration problem. Now options given are probenicid penicillin, second one amoxicillin clavulanate, third one hydrochlorothiazide, triamterin, fourth one an antacid and H2 blocker. Now let us analyze uh, every option. So the question given is which combination should not be taken. Right? Now look at the first option, probenicid and penicillin. See this combination is very popular because when probenicid is taken along with penicillin, probenicid increases the T half of the penicillin. What happens is, penicillin will get excreted from uh, kidney and that excretion is inhibited by probenicid. That is the reason why sometimes to increase the lifetime of penicillin in human body, probenicid is given. So these two drugs, in fact, they are, they are preferred, they should be taken together. So this is not the uh, answer because the question asks about which should not be taken. Look at the second option. Amoxicillin clavulanate which is a very popular combination known as Augmentine. Amoxicillin is a penicillin, semi-synthetic penicillin. But the problem with amoxicillin is it is sensitive or susceptible for beta-lactamase or penicillinase enzyme produced by bacteria. So what happens is in this combination clavulanic acid inhibits that beta-lactamase enzyme and amoxicillin can easily act on that uh, bacteria. So this combination is known as augmentin, which is very much prefer preferred one. Now look at the option three. Hydrochlorothiazide triamterin. Now see both of them are diuretics. Hydrochlorothiazide is a thiazide diuretic. One of the problem with this thiazide diuretic is potassium elimination. So what happens is thiazide as well as loop, both of them increases sodium ex excretion at the collecting duct. There sodium will get reabsorbed and potassium is excreted. So what happens with these drugs, potassium excretion is increased or potassium loss will be there. To compensate that potassium sparing diuretics are used like triamterin. Now this triamterin is a sodium channel inhibitor at collecting duct. When sodium channel is inhibited, sodium will not be reabsorbed. When sodium is reabsorbed, then only potassium is lost. So when the reabsorption is, reabsorption is inhibited, potassium loss will not be there. This is how this combination acts. So this is also preferred one. Now we have come to the last combination that is an antacid and H2 blocker. Understand this, antacids like aluminum hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide gels, they interfere with the absorption of the majority of the drugs which are taken along with them. It is not just a H2 blocker. You take, you give any drug along with the gelacil kind of antacids, the absorption is reduced. So it should, it should not be given together. To confuse you, they have given the same category like drugs which can be used to treat ulcer antacid and H2 blocker, this combination is given. So which, see, <clears throat> identify the question, identify the set of drugs which should not be taken at the same time. <clears throat> I'm sorry, these two drugs should not be taken at the same time. So the answer for this question is fourth one, antacid and H2 blocker. Now understand the complexity of these questions. So you know most of the things, but while giving the answer, you will get a lot of confusion because the fourth one as such, you see both of them are the drugs which are used to treat ulcer. So you feel like the combination is fine. No, it is not fine. The problem is with absorption. Now let us look into the another question. Now look at this question. One of the statement is not true with respect to beta 2 adrenoreceptor agonist used to treat asthma. So they are asking four options are given out of four, three are correct related to beta 2 adrenoreceptor. One is not correct. What is that we need to figure out? Look at the options. They dilate bronchi. They also inhibit mediator release from mast cells. They also inhibit release from monocytes of tumor necrosis factor alpha. Short acting agents like salmetrol are used on as needed basis. Now understand this. Beta 2 adrenoreceptor agonist, their mechanism of action is they act on G protein coupled receptor, GS type of G protein coupled receptors. Now these receptors are present on many cells in our lungs. So the actions are varied in the lungs. They cause bronchodilation. They also inhibit mediator release from the mast cells. 
and they also inhibit release of tumor necrosis factor alpha all the three are true but most of the time we tend to read only bronchodilation remaining two we don't read in detail but their action is also included there so option 4 is not related to or which is not true related to beta 2 adenoreceptor what is that given short acting agents like salmeterol are used on as needed basis now see look at the drug salmeterol is not short acting it is long acting terbuterin salbutamol short acting but salmeterol formeterol are long acting drugs so the statement itself is wrong because it says short acting agents like salmeterol no salmeterol is long acting agent so when you know that classification also you can do that uh, you you can uh, give the right answer so this is how a little bit tricky questions are there so logically you need to think and answer the questions so i hope this video is useful all the best